Thanks for hosting here today uh, for the Tech Talks. I'm really happy to be here. I will um, talk about 3D measurement technologies and try to give a brief overview. Of course, it's a challenge in, in 20 minutes, but I will do my best. So let's get started. So who I am? My name is Maximilian Klammer. I'm R&D manager at Chromasense. Um, just call me Max, that's more simple. And who's Chromasense, what we are doing? We are the line scan experts. So we manufacture, develop line scan camera system like machine cameras, stereo cameras. This will be the topic for today. Light sources and also fully integrated system for any kind of application from printing to road inspection to PCB inspection. We will have a brief look into this one, focusing on 3D today, today, of course. So what's so cool about 3D? If you ask me, we have better, the business is really cool technology and we have an exponential function with the number of applications and the growing number over the years. Of course, it's just a little bit of fun here. I'm just joking, but I think it's really cool because so many things come together. Um, and that's what I really love about it. So just giving a brief outline, I will quickly talk about 3D applications, what I see, just to, to yeah, give a little bit an overlook, uh, but it's not complete. I will talk a little bit out about the technologies and focusing on the industrial inline inspection applications. And since this is my main expertise, of course, I will have a closer look into the 3D stereo line scan applications and give you a feeling about where it really is the best choice to go for these kind of cameras. And of course, I will give you a brief overview a summary at the end. So 3D applications, of course, it's not complete, but just starting from even in the consumer, we have gaming yeah, where you have like 3D and, and augmented reality in games we have. Yeah, if, you, if you plan your furniture in, in your new living room or whatever you can use today, a nice iPad with a LiDAR scanner to, to measure your room and, and see an augmented reality where your furniture can fit in is really great. Of course, face recognition identification is also consumer um, application. Virtual try-on. I did this myself based on uh, 2D images trying uh, uh, sunglasses. They can still improve, so I think um, the Apple 3D LiDAR will help you a lot. Mobility, everybody is talking about autonomous driving. I fear the example of the Vimo leader system. It's uh, basically a time of flight system. And maybe who's following the technology discussion here, Tesla thinks we don't need a 3D measurement system. They just use a bunch of cameras. Um, all the other ones um, pretty much think we need the 3D measurement on the car, so it's a very important application. Road inspection, we will have a look in robotics navigation, for example, in, in uh, logistics centers, it's a huge application, 3D measurement devices. Reproduction, for example, for di digital archiving, fine art, reverse engineering, if we have some repairs on, on some old product, and for example, a cruiser scanner, they offer uh, scanning of 2D and 3D of fine art objects to, to reproduce or um, to archive. Manufacturing quality control, of course, this is the main industrial application field where we, it starts with sorting of natural raw materials like wood or, or leather, stuff like this. And of course, electronics, PCB inspection, like from LMI is, is showing here, electronics and also um, last tech talk, my, my uh, dear colleague, Timo was presenting BGA inspection using 3D Pixar cameras. So the electronics and PCB manufacturing is, is, is a huge field. And of course, car body inspection, like gap dimension, um, um, GOM and size are the, the strong ones here. And any kind of robotics application in, in welding, picking assembly is of course very important. Pharma and medical is a huge field starting from tablet inspection, but maybe most well known like diagnostic imaging. Um, where we uh, use a CET scanning system or um, magnetic scanning system to, to really have a 3D image of the body to understand you know, if everything is well or not, and research, of course. So, but what are the industrial requirements? To my understanding, there are two fields. One is more the research and development, the fun part, where we are looking for, let's say, the highest 3D resolution possible, 
flexible for different use cases. You can have different sample from day to day, but maybe it's not critical, the cycle time and measurement time. So we can have a point-wise measurement um, approach. I think for inline application where we have the manufacturing process, it's a completely different story. So here we really want to inspect like 100% of every single product being produced should really have the 100% the quality control or even having um, feedback loop to improve the quality during the running process. What we need here is of course a stable device, rare recalibration maintenance, but it's much more critical in terms of cycle time. So we need a high throughput of data, data processing, and here typically um, scanning or snapshot 3D systems are used. And of course it must be non-invasive. So mainly optical measurement methods are used because of course you, you shall not destroy 100% of your products because then you have a problem on your production line. Okay, so now having a look into the interesting technologies, um, I try to sort it from resolution point of view coming from the really, really high resolution and approaching the, the, the lower resolution part and understanding uh, a little bit of the technologies behind. And yeah, since I'm a, a physicist, I really love actually scanning tunneling microscopy. It's, it's really cool technology. And it's also exponential law we are using here for the tunneling current. And we can even resolve objects on an atom level. So below nanometer scale. And that is really fascinating technology. Atomic force microscopy, uh, nearly the same, but different using um, not um, conductance, but um, atomic forces to measure also on atomic level structures. What is very important also is interferometrical approaches, wide light and coherent uh, interfer interferometry, which can resolve differences in the nanometer range. For example, it's very important technology to manufacture high quality lenses, mirrors, in the optical industry and, and many more. Also in semiconductor industry, these approaches are used um, to get really the resolution on a nanometer scale. Confocal microscopy is uh, more in the bio bio biology um, applied and, and medical. Color confocal scanning is used uh, in, in many applications. And very interesting also digital microscopy, where pretty much just the depth of focus is used to um, derive the, the 3D shape of the surface. Stereo triangulation is one of the very important um, technologies also used by our uh, human vision. Magnet resonance Im imaging, of course, in the medical field. Computer tomography, laser line triangulation is also very um, important for industrial application. And structured light phase shift is also um, largely penetrating many applications in the market. Light field imaging, again, is more for um, um, consumer application. OK, so of course, this is not complete, but I think it's, it's, it's quite nice to have a little bit of an overview here. And now we will explain all of these technologies in detail. No, of course not. This will not work. Um, time of flight, I forgot, um, mainly used in, in automotive and navigation of robots. I will just pick a few of them, which I really like. And again, scanning tunneling microscope, STM, there is a little tip coming very close to the surface, but not touching it. And then the electrons have from quantum physics, the probability to tunnel to the tip and we can measure the current. And with this quite simple approach, we can measure the structure of atoms here in gold layer. It's really fascinating technology, but if you see a real setup, this is research development for the hard nerds in, in the physics lab. So for industry, maybe not so important. Semiconductor industry development, I would say yes. Digital microscopy, there's a nice system from Keyens, for example. They are just using, if you have a microscope, you have a very wide opening angle. So it means a very little depth of field. So just from measuring the focus, you can derive very precisely on the distance and derive from microscopic image also a really 3D map. I think this is a very nice um, system also for re research and development and can be used in, in different kind of application. For inline, 
I would say too slow. Laser line triangulation, it's as strong as simple. So you just have a projected laser line and an area camera will always scan from top the profile of the line. And it's very easy to understand if the distance from the object is, diff uh, is changing, it will change the position of the line on, on the sensor. It's a scanning approach. And I think everybody who will um, have a look in 3D system, he will find a lot of about um, laser line system. It's a scanning approach, um, widely used. Only limitation is if you have a large measurement depth, um, you need also a large ROI to, to um, analyze from the camera. So to measure a single line, you need a complete frame. So this is sometimes limiting in terms of scanning speed. And of course, stereo imaging. It's also, I would say, um, a simple and cool approach. It's, it's like what we are doing every day with our brain, with our two eyes. Um, we are just having a view on, from two different positions on the object. And we do in real life calculate um, the distance to the single object. I think it's what our brain is doing here is, is really cool. And also here explain the principle. We change the distance. It also means a change in position of the images in two cameras. And we can measure that using algorithms. And um, uh, this is then also um, possible from any kind of, of image content. We can measure the 3D shape of the surface of an object. Structured light approach here, a little bit different. There is a known structured light projected on the object, and the camera will, will, will measure it. And um, it can be a static pattern or a, a phase shift and frequency modulated pattern. And then algorithm can reconstruct from the distortion of the line pattern, the 3D shape of the surface. And this is also widely used technology. Um, it's, it's a snapshot approach. Um, so it has a certain region of interest. It's also uh, used, for example, in, by, by GOM size in, in car body inspection or, for example, in electronics industry. So just to summarize, for industrial application, my view is for inline, we have predominantly laser scan, line scan system. We have pattern projection and we have the stereo system approach. And so these are, let's say, for inline 100% inspection um, for many applications, the, the predominant technologies used. And since um, my main expertise is in stereo system, I will have a closer, closer look now in, in stereo line scan camera applications to give you a little bit of feeling about what you can do with such kind of a system. Yeah, so let's get diving into it, checking the time. I think we're good. So last week, who joined the webinar last week from, from my dear colleague, I mean, it was more details, you can also look them up uh, online, is BGA inspection. So the BGA is the ball grid array. So it's the, the small soldering balls on, on the backside of, of a uh, package of an IC, for example, processor unit or RAM. So all the electronics we're using every day, they have many components using this kind of soldering interface. And if there is just a single ball has a problem, the whole um, a system like your cell phone or your PC will not work. So it's really important to inspect them in line every single chip. And what makes the difference with the ChromaSense solution is we have a 3D stereo line scan camera system with 15,000 pixel resolution per line. 15K, 15,000 pixel. And that's the difference to, if you compare it to laser line scanner, the latest version what I saw has close to 4K, but it's at three, three or 3K three resolution. If you go for a snapshot um, fringe projection, it's maybe um, um, 5K maximum, but we can go up to 15K. And that makes a difference. The line scan camera can run really fast. With a 10 micron resolution, we can go up to 800, 180 millimeters per second and cover a field of view of 150 millimeters a 10 micro, micrometer resolution. And you have a 2D image, high resolution 2D image, and the 3D data on top. 
because many applications where you have, let's say, 60% of the inspection task is 2D image. And on top, you want to understand more about the 3D shape. So you have here with that system all of this data, let's say, in one run, in one shot. Also in the field of general PCB inspection, where you have, in the meanwhile, really large PCBs for high power application or, or any kind of electronics you might think about. Of course, here, um, also the 2D and the 3D data makes a difference here. And also for, since we're having a, a passive 3D stereo approach, we can choose the light condition. So also here for PCB, we can choose, for example, bright field component and the diffuse dome light component in one module. And then you have optimized 3D and 2D data for this specific object. Connector pin inspection um, is very important also really to inspect every single connector tip of every single connector being delivered, especially in automotive industry. We provide here a dedicated camera and illumination kit, which what is special here. Again, of course, you have the 2D and 3D data, but the flexibility with the light source, we can bring with the coaxial um, system shown here on the right, the light really down to the bottom of the connector housing. And that makes a difference here, because if you have like a steep angle from laser triangulation, you're not able to receive any signal from down there. And the reference for the 3D measurement typically is in the bottom of the connector. So, and also here we have the scalability of the system. We have different camera and in camera resolution, field of view and optical resolution, where you can configure with the help of our engineers to perfect configuration for your needs. Motor block inspection. Generally, it's, it's the fitting saw phase, uh, because if, if you have um, the milled uh, saw phase, you can have um, uh, 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 yeah, any, any uh, graves or um, dents or any kind of failures on the saw phase. And again, also here, the difference is you have the 2D and the 3D data on top, so you can distinguish different kinds of defects on the saw phase. Here, we recommend also the 15K dual camera with 30 micron resolution, and you can end up with 450 millimeter. So this is really a big field of view with a really high resolution, and you can scan the full motor block in one scan. That's the idea behind it. Two minutes left. Yeah, thank you. So I'm close to the end. So train inspection is completely different story. But also here we use the 3D images and the 2D images at 4K resolution on top. And we have a dedicated light source where you can have from, from a large distance, the light over a large depth of field. So again, here we are flexible in receiving high quality 2D and 3D data for a 100% inspection of the, uh, the body of a train. Road inspection also here, we have a dedicated system with the ultra high field of view. It's 4.5 meters. So really the camera is mounted, for example, on, on, on the backside of, of, a, of a truck. And uh, we have a dedicated illumination system. And in one run, again, you have the 2D and the 3D data on top to, to um, measure in 2D and 3D, like shown here, defects in the road. And there's a strong uh, trend for fully automated 3D inspection of roads. Okay, so close to the end summary. I think 3D is cool and will have a future because there's so many applications and so many technologies. So it makes really a lot of fun to work in that field. Um, yeah, many technologies and even more applications makes it so interesting. And as a short recap, ChromaSense 3D Pixar is really making the difference if you need a high-end system for 2D and 3D inspection task with a really high resolution. That is really um, what makes a difference here. Okay, thank you. We received some questions. 
Ah, so now you can see me too. <laughs> uh, what is the depth of focus in in the case of a 10 micron per pixel resolution? Um, so depth of focus here is of course physically limited. Um, this system, for example, has an, an f-stop eight. Um, it depends if you define uh, the um, what frequency you use. Typically, yeah, it's it's about one millimeter, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and can the three D measurement range can be higher because um, the algorithm is not operating on a single pixel? This may be important to know. Mm -hmm. Next question about the resolution. Is the lateral resolution of your devices defined by the pixel size or is it the true optical resolution different? So um, we have optical engineers here who, who really have a look at the details and we define optical resolution as minimum of 20 to 30 percent at Nyquist frequency. So yeah, it, it's, it's never 100 percent, but we have a 20 percent um, um, uh, signal difference on Nyquist frequency. Mm -hmm. um, and what is the height resolution of the last system you showed, mounted two meters far from the object? And do you have any systems with three meter or more distance of you? We have actually, um, okay, so starting. So the, the, the road inspection camera shown in, in, in the last one has a height resolution of about uh, one millimeter. Uh, that, that is the, the reference here. And mm, you can check on our homepage, we have a huge portfolio of 3D cameras. We have built one which has a working distance of, um, I think, four meters. It was for inspection of uh, very hot surfaces where you need a large working distance. So just let us know what you, what you want. The, the strength of the system is the scalability that really makes also the difference here. And do you have a system with three meter or more distance view? Yes, field of okay. view. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, what are the requirements about acquisition and processing time versus hardware? We need to get it very, very fast. How fast we get the point cloud? It's a very good point. Also here, the uh, 3D pixel system is um, flexible because the, the, the processing is running on, on GPUs. So you can scale the computational power by the GPU you are choosing and also the number of GPUs. So you can really ramp up the, the, the hardware and the implementation to have um, the 20 kilohertz of 3D data reconstruction as the camera delivers them. So you can have really the, the full performance, but you have to scale the computational power of the PC, of course. Yeah. Okay. What are the most technical benefit of the 3D Pixar system you mentioned? Yeah, I think really the, the difference is the high resolution image and even 2D color image available. Um, so if, if the, the application really demands the 2D and the 3D data or two other, that makes a difference here. What do you think is the most important field of applications in future for 3D? Thing is, it's it's so versatile. So there's so many application and different technologies. I think it it will just grow all together. Let's say for for the industrial, um, also the laser line, the the fringe projection and the stereo system will will have different use cases. Just where where it's the technology is the best fit. And I think that is also the uh, the the key message that really it depends. What is the application, the KPIs you need, and then you have to choose the right technology. And um, yeah, there is no no uh, right and wrong. It's just about making the right decision which technology to use. I think. Yeah. And what do you think is the most important field of applications? In terms maybe for chroma sense. Yeah, <laughs> chroma sense. Yeah, it's, <laughs> this is uh, production and quality control manufacturing in electronics, um, mainly in components. But generally, um, in, in terms of quantity, I could also imagine that um, the uh, autonomous vehicles and surveillance are maybe the, in terms of quantity, overall quantity, maybe um, the, maybe the, the largest quantities in the market. I could imagine, but who knows? Can the 3D Pixar used in ambient light and what will be the price range for it? 
So ambient light is really not an issue because we, we need so high power light sources from our side that um, ambient light doesn't have a big impact. Um, a cost range, I'm the R&D guy, <laughs> sorry. <for that. laughs> Please contact uh, our sales colleagues, um, partners, um, whatever I will tell you, it will be wrong. 